Um, here's a list of items that will be dealt today. I'll start from moving load lanes, types and application methods for moving loads, moving lanes, uh, vehicle loads, accessible vehicle loads in database and user-defined loads, um, moving load case, creating case-specific moving load case, uh, meaning uh, creating project-specific moving load case, <clears throat> analysis result and visualization, uh, possible analysis result applications. Uh, now I'll now I'll start by covering moving load lanes. Um, just out of curiosity, everyone everyone's hearing me clearly clearly, right? Uh, please raise your hand up once again. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Um, in MITRE Civil, moving load lanes can be applied to gutter or deck elements, but to replicate the load distribution behavior at the most um, realistic approach, it is recommended to apply load directly to deck elements. Uh, in MITRE Civil, deck elements are uh, recommended, well, mostly beam elements and plate elements are used for deck elements. So therefore, we have two different types of moving load lanes. Uh, depends on the deck elements type, applic applicable load lane types uh, are different. For beam elements, traffic line lanes are being used on the top. Uh, for plate elements, traffic surface lanes are used. Uh, it determines the load application method on elements. Line lanes are mostly in form of uniformly distributed distribute loads when surface, surface lanes are pressure loads. Uh, load distribution method dis, uh, determines which set of elements are directly under applied moving load. Uh, when the lane element is selected on the right, um, the reference girder the reference girder elements, the reference girder elements for load lanes will be the origin of the moment arm, and resulted moments and shear will be direct directly applied to the reference elements. Um, it's clearly described in the picture right um, on here. Um, I uh, directly. Um, Copy this picture from our online help manual, uh, which user can access by pressing F1 with MITRE Civil open on the window. Uh, when, okay, I'll continue with the presentation. When cross beam um, distribution method is selected, as you can see, um, the applied loads are directly applied to beam elements, which is cross beams. And um, you can, when users activate the cross beam, uh, the user can select which beam group. Um, this beam group can be defined in the structural group and you, uh, user, the applied moving load is directly applied to the beam elements and then it's transferred to the girders and then to the support. So frequently asked question number one, for more refined analysis and accurate results, I have defined deck as a plate and girder as a beam. I apply live load, but it gives me error message. Uh, there are two possible two possible respo responses for uh, there are two possible cause of error for for this type of uh, query. First, uh, user might have applied a traffic line load with a with selecting girder elements. Uh, user already defined the deck element with a plate. Uh, for the plate elements, traffic surface load needs to be used. And um, yeah, the description is described in the in the presentation. And for the second response, uh, wrong as wrong as eccentricity for lanes. Um, I wouldn't say long. I wouldn't say wrong, but it's too much eccentricity. 
um, when the lanes are defined outside of the deck width or uh, deck elements, a program gives out error and that it would not proceed. Um, additionally, uh, as you can, as you will notice in the program, traffic surface lanes do not have load distribution 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 options uh, because for the surface lanes, um, deck elements are directly selected for the lane application when line lanes are based on the gutter elements. Um, there are three possible options for selecting the reference line for line, line lanes. First is two points. Uh, two points user can simply select the start point and end point of the, of the, of the line lane. Uh, this comes very handy for straight bridges. A uh, user can just select one girder and then uh, the start element of the girder and then the end element of the girder and lanes. Uh, the moving load lane is automatically defined. Uh, picking, manually uh, manual element selection. Uh, user can um, select the the elements that a uh, line line lane will be applied uh, manually. Um, once the once user uh, select the elements, it will record in the bottom window in numeric orders. Um, third option is element number input. Um, it's same as picking, but uh, once you once you um, define the structure group, um, program will tell you the element numbers for the structure group. You can simply copy that and then um, input in the number window, and then uh, line lane will be automatically generated. Uh, the lane direction. Um, this determines the, the the direction of applied vehicle load uh, forward, meaning um, it's, it's going to follow the numeric order. Backward, it's going to come back. It's going to um, it's going to move um, in backwards in both direction. Program will uh, consider both cases for backward and back, uh, forward and backwards. Frequently asked question number two: um, When when I choose backward for moving direction, does it change the list order of selected elements, or does it just change the direction? Um, as I explained in the previous pre previous slide, it doesn't really change the uh, numerical order of the elements. It only changes the direction of the vehicle. Uh, move. Traffic lane optimization. This feature enables program to allocate vehicle loads on both edge of assigned traffic lane to consider the worst case scenario of moving load case. Uh, when this function is activated, user can also modify the loaded lane width. Um, it does not. It does not um, fix. Is it does. It is not fixed at 10 feet. Uh, user can. Uh, freely modify the lane width. Um, however, it does not it does not consider uh, it does not automatically con consider the the free uh, the safety offset from edge of the design lane specified in ASHTO three point six point one point three point one. Um, I believe it's for the two feet um, for exterior girders. Well, exterior uh, barriers and one feet for inside or the other. Um, yeah, it doesn't. The program does not automatically consider this. So um, user can freely modify deck um, that safety offset by using the eccentricity um, when defining the lane, uh, the line lane or surface lane. Uh, frequently asked. Yeah. Frequently asked question number three, is traffic lane optimization the same as load flowing? Um, traffic lane optimization is a little bit slightly different from load floating. Um, when load floating is 
um, literally shifting the vehicle load along the lane width, um, the traffic lane optimization only allows, you know, only allocate the, um, the, the applied vehicle load on the, each edge and the cent center of the, uh, the applied lane, lane width. Um, the load floating is currently under development and it will be added to the program shortly um, next year, I believe um, June or by end of next year. Um, however, our program can also um, can do uh, our program has some workaround approach for the load floating. Um, it's called transverse moving load case. Uh, I don't know how many of you have um, seen this feature on the moving load uh, moving load case a uh, moving load code but uh, transverse moving load code allows user to allocate moving load in cross-sectional point of view and run analysis for maximum number of applica applicable lanes the location location of vehicle loads and cross-sectional moments uh, one uh, I'll uh, one of the uh, project application that I experienced before, um, I simply ran um, analysis, uh, static analysis with all the dead loads. And then uh, once our program, once you turn on the legend, uh, you can, um, you, you have idea of where the, the, the critical elements um, is located. And um, you, uh, I define this transverse moving load at the support at the peer caps, and then ran uh, ran analysis and retrieved the result based on the critical element from the dead load analysis. Meaning that um, this moving load is located. Uh, the, the the moving load location is based on the critical element of the dead load analysis. Um, do you guys have any questions so far? I'll, um, if you have, if you have any questions, um, by this point, please, um, write it down. I'll pick one and then answer it and then, uh, proceed with, uh, with the slides. Uh, you'll be able to get these slides uh, after the presentation. I'll post them online. Uh, you will be able to access this PDF format um, and with uh, example uh, project files that I that will be showing um, in this presentation too. Um, static load case. I think I may need a little more explanation on that. Um, if you guys don't have any questions, I'll... Oh, um, I worked my example files in Midas Civil 2016, um, but for the sake of all the license, uh, all the program versions being different, I'll push them up with um, 2015 version. Yeah, so um, it can be open with 2015 and 16 at the same time. Okay, um, yeah, I'll, I'll proceed with the slides. Um, uh, as you already know, we have very large database of predefined vehicle loads. For ASTO LRFD codes, we have LRFD 12, standard and legal and permit loads. Um, LRFD for 2014 is currently um, being updated right now. It should be updated by early next year or June. Um, we also worked very hard with DOT, DOT um, active users. And as you can see in below, uh, on, the, on the picture on the right, 
uh, we already have um, nine different DOT loads um, defined. Uh, this is not a single load, it's a set of loads, but just a name, name in this way. Um, each of them has about seven to eight or, or even more um, at their, well, how, how many ever uh, meeting their need um, already defined in them. Um, for the other, load, other loads, we have train loads, Cooper, uh, Cooper 80. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have ARIMA loads um, in our database, but we can, um, uh, the user always can create the user defined loads using uh, this window. Um, our user defined loads have very user, user friend, friendly Excel layout. Um, either um, it gives user option to uh, use the uh, apply the loads as a point load or distributed load, symmetric or asymmetric Excel load, or varying space varying spacing Excel load. Um, user can save the Excel load information on the right, and then they can simply just select the type of Excel and make this uh, window, uh, fill in this window, and then the load will be automatically generated. Excuse me. Um, anybody have a question about the user defined loads? Um, MTO, MTO loads are not included in the system yet, but once we see the need for it, we'll, we'll update it and then uh, add to the database. Uh, moving load case. There are two approaches for moving load analysis. Dis one is dis distribution factor analysis and second is influence line analysis. Uh, our program uh, is using, currently using influence line analysis. Um, there are four scale factors that you can assign in the program. First is impact factor, as known as dynamic allowance factor. Um, second is user-defined min max number of loading lane. Third is multiple presence factor. And last one is ampl amplifying factor for selected load case. Um, there's no limit of, uh, limit on the number of axles that can be applied in the user defined load. Uh, I'll get back to it um, after after I go I go through the slides. Uh, moving load analysis supposedly run for loaded situation for a single vehicle at a time. However, our program can consider multiple load effects. This comes to be useful when construction is being done adjacent to existing structure with high traffic or high pedestrian loads or considering the intersection load. Um, as you can see, uh, we have two different types, independent and combined. Independent and combined. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate the uh, the load case um, after the after all the slides, but in this for this uh, for this picture for this specific project file, I've defined um, HL93 truck and uh, surface load for the uh, mim uh, replicating the pedestrian load. As you can see, um, independent gave me only um, the load case, which will create the maximum the, the worst case scenario of of two uh, between two cases when combined actually combined the load effects and uh, displayed the, the the maximum 
the worst case scenario combining two loading two load effects. Um, analysis result can be retrieved in tab tabular format as as well as um, available for our other analysis results. When DEC was modeled with plate elements, straight uh, stress calculation for deck, uh, stress calculation for plate elements are also available. Uh, moving load tracer um, displays the location of applied vehicle that uh, under the the worst case scenario of the applied loads. Um, we also have something called lane support negative moment test. Um, this is well, we call it a uh, dual dual truck, dual truck, uh, yeah, dual dual truck test. Um, our program has function to um, apply this Ashto 3.6.131. Um, and I will I will demonstrate this modifier shortly after all the slides. Um, the fourth option is view by maps. Um, when analysis when analysis results results are displayed in min, max, or in envelope envelope form, a program displays the maximum values of all ca all categories, meaning um, it will display the maximum value of all. Uh, but when the view by max is activated, program um, ask user to pick a single component for the maximum value and calculate the other components at at the cor at the corresponding case uh, meaning that it, it will not show the maximum value for all the all the components but it will rather um, select one component for the max and then calculate the other the other values for um, at that corresponding case. So, for example, when view by max is not selected, in the, according to this table, um, program will show uh, 2.5 for the MY and 0.1 for the max for FC. But when the view by max is uh, when view by max is activated, program will show uh, view by max is activated and I selected MY as a reference. Um, program will show MY equals to 2.5 and FC equals to minus 0.5. Okay, uh, frequently, quite, uh, frequently asked question number four. Bridge is modeled with deck as a plate and girder as a beam modeling approach. Completed analysis including moving load analysis. When I tried to check stress values for deck elements, it did not display anything. Um, in order to consider the deck stress calculation, uh, user needs to go to the moving load analysis control control window and activate the stress calculation key. Uh, if this is not selected, it will just show um, just zero. It will, it will not calculate anything for plate uh, plate deck elements. Uh, question number five, I define structural group for specific girder and ran lane support negative moment check. Analysis su successfully completed, but result does not look correct or it does not show anything. So prior to running uh, lane support negative moment check, user needs to manually specify, uh, manually specify the start element for each span of the selected girder from the traffic lane uh, properties. So in the bottom window, you will see um, element number, eccentricity, and then span start. So you need to manually select, uh, you need to manually click um, the span start in order, in order for a program to recognize um, the each span, each span width. Question number six, 
I retrieved analysis result data and activated view by max option. However, it did not change values in table at all. Uh, in, or, in order to um, display or activate the view by max analysis result, user needs to activate normal concurrent forces and stresses from moving load analysis window. Uh, without, uh, without this, without this um, function activated, I don't think you don't. You, I don't think you have access to uh, view by max. Even if you do, it, it would not um, show any difference on the table of in the in the table um, results. Um, so this is the end of end of slides. Uh, right now, I'll I'll jump into the program and um, cover one by one um, for the described uh, functions in the in the presentation. Okay. Um, this is just a simple. Um, uh, how many girders? Uh, four girder uh, steel composite bridge that I created using Wizard. Um, this is all all beam, uh, all frame elements, uh, all frame modeling approach, and I'll be showing. Um, how to define the the, the line lane uh, using using a structure group and uh, activation and deactivate uh, function of multi civil. So um, the easiest way to define the moving load lane um, the line lane for a uh, stick composite bridge uh, just in just like this case is go to go to group. And program automatically generates the gutter um, uh, structure group. Right click it and activate, and it will it will only activate the gutters. And go to load and moving load. Uh, as you can see, I don't have any moving load defined. And select one uh, traffic line lanes. Add. Let's name it L1 and two point. So simply click the first one and the second one, which will be the end of the of my moving line lane uh, traffic line lane. As you can see, uh, I've selected um, the uh, the selected elements are listed in numerical order on the bottom window. And once you click OK, you will be able to see uh, the line lane defined in the program. Uh, for for the for the um, for the project with uh, plate elements as a deck element. Um, I've also generated the same model using wizard with um, deck, uh, deck with a plate elements. Uh, for this case, um, I, I will activate only the plate elements and loop from the top, go to load, moving load. Uh, let me delete all of them. Just LRFD, go to traffic surface lanes, add, and by picking, I'll select by window and select these. Excuse me, and choose these elements, plate elements, and either you can uh, click here and click one by one, 
or you can copy the element number and go to number and paste and add and it will automatically <clears throat> list them up in numerical order at the bottom window and click OK let's, let's name it L1 again and you will see Oh, um, this is often one of the times that users have difficulty of assigning the traffic lanes. Uh, the numerical orders are, um, so right now you can see the lanes are all jumping around. Uh, that was because it might be the case when you just, co when you just copy the elements um, in numerical order. Um, oh, when you, when you select the, surf, uh, the plate elements program automatically line them up in numerical order but when the program is generated when, when program generates um, the structure structure file with plate elements uh, the plate element uh, numbers are not always in numerical order so uh, so if you don't want to have um, that the error that I just experienced uh, please be careful when you choose um, the reference, not not reference, but when you choose this, uh, the girder elements for with the plate elements. Okay, um, I'll jump into the vehicles. Go to standard. Um, as you can see. For the LRFD loads, we have uh, HL93 truck, 93 tandem, and HS20 uh, fatigue. If I go to standard, um, I have all these loads. And for the DOT loads, and for the others, we have Cooper 80. Um, if you don't find any of these, if you don't, um, one of the one of the most frequently frequently asked question about the other load is um, Arima. Uh, do we have any Arima uh, lane, uh, vehicle lanes in our in our uh, system? But um, apparently, uh, unfortunately, right now we don't have the Arima code in in our in Mighty Civil. But they can go to uh, add user defined and select a um, permit truck or uh, train load to define uh, as as many as uh, the loads applic uh, applied loads for Arima. Uh, Arima specific uh, train loads. Um, I'll open up another file for um, the traffic lane optimization. Um, this is the um, one of one of the predefined model that I already ran analysis just to show you guys the traffic lane optimization results. Uh, it's curved bridge. I created a curved bridge because um, I chose curved bridge to show the traffic lane optimization because uh, for the straight bridges, um, it's very hard to um, visualize or select um, specific element that will um, show the different different moments. Um, the curved curved bridge would um, make it a lot easier to show the the different location of the vehicle for um, the worst case scenario. Uh, so right now, I've already ran. Uh, 
uh, analysis, I've defined line load along along um, along the along the bridge. Uh, as you can see, I've defined um, HL93 truck and <clears throat> I go to result, go to moving load tra uh, moving load tracer, go to beam force moment and check the result for um, five, uh, element 588 which is located the uh, center of the exterior uh, gutter and activate only that portion of the bridge Um, as you can see, applied lines, uh, applied line lanes are uh, being shown in the green when the actual load application is offsetted from the center of the center of the line lane to the right uh, to create more uh, to create um, more moments. Um, it, the traffic optimization uh, function uh, shifted bridge uh, shifted the applied vehicle load to the right and um, which will create the worst case scenario um, of the uh, of the applied moving moving load case um, next I'll go into the user defined user defined load um, and uh, and this uh, demonstrate the uh, varying space option. Um, okay. Go to the moving load. Um, go to the moving load vehicles. And this is permit one. Uh, modify. Uh, as you can see, I only uh, used. Uh, two axle loads with spacing um, 14 feet, uh, 50, and 100. Uh, one of the things that you need to um, be careful about using the varying space. So, if you want to have, let's say, number three with the varying space. Uh, if you want to have number three with varying space, um, you need to uh, click um, the number three, not number two. Uh, some people um, com get confused with uh, which one uh, which axle that that needs to be activated to uh, consider the varying space? So uh, with number four activated, I'll check the result. Um, okay, checking checking results for element fifteen. Uh, Turn on the element number. So right now, uh, the distance between third axle and fourth axle is about 50 feet. But when I check next element, the the spacing increased. Um, uh, I don't know by how much, but um, so when I when I inputted when I inputted the varying space from 100 to uh, 50 to 100 uh, program um, automatically applies applies um, that fourth um, anything from fourth axle um, from 50 to 100 feet and it displays um, this the uh, it displays at that 
uh, it displays how uh, whichever spacing that creates um, the worst case scenario for selected element. So I check 17. And when I check on the other side, uh, it's even larger. And it comes, it comes back. So it depends on the selected elements. Um, the varying space um, allows the program to calculate individual uh, loading effects and then displays the worst case scenario, or displays the uh, vehicle location for the worst case scenario. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll look into um, ask questions uh, by end of um, this presentation. I have about one more model file to show you guys. Um, if I cannot cover all of them, I'll uh, I'll gather them up and then I'll summarize uh, the responses and send it back to you guys um, as a group email without um, yeah uh, anonymously. anonymously. Yes. So uh, even if I do not get to, um, well, I'm not answering your question right away, please feel free to um, ask questions in the question box. Um, you'll, you'll get a response after presentation uh, within a couple of days, uh, definitely by, um, by next uh, Tuesday or uh, latest Wednesday. Um, Centrifugal force um, is not currently, um, uh, it's, it is not automatically applied in, in MITA Civil right now, but there is always a um, workaround approach. Um, I do not have a specific uh, model file to represent um, or uh, demonstrate the centrifugal, centrifugal force application, but uh, I'll, I can definitely include that uh, response or workaround approach in the response email and then share it with all of you guys. Okay, um, this, is the, this is the same model file that, um, that I um, captured the image from, uh, image in the presentation uh, when I explained the loading effect. So I go to uh, moving and load, uh, as I said, um, for the traffic line lanes, I've defined uh, two, two lanes, one mimicking the pedestrian, and second is the vehicle lane. And for the vehicles, for the loads, I've defined uh, 90, uh, HL93, HL93 truck. And for the pedestrian, um, I've just uh, applied the surface load of 0.5 kips. Um, seems too high for a pedestrian, but I just applied that. Um, and for the moving load case, uh, I've defined two, one independent, one combined. When I look more uh, closer into it, um, so here you can define, uh, here you can uh, adjust the multiple presence factor, um, um, the, the scale factor that applies, uh, depends on applied loaded lanes. Uh, you can, you can um, also select loading effect combined or the independent. Um, for, for now, I've, uh, I've assigned the pedestrian load to a pedestrian lane only and truck load to vehicle lane only. And let's look more, more closely into the, into the load case. So um, this is how Mighty Civil looks like. And you can, you can choose a vehicle class, which, whichever vehicle load that you want to select from. 
um, scale factor. This was the, um, the scale factor for selected load case. Um, if you want to increase, if you want to emphasize or amplify um, the effect of this specific load case, you can always um, apply scale factor here. Uh, you can select the number of loading lanes um, for the minimum and max. Um, for example, you've, you've assigned six loaded lanes, um, but uh, you come here and then when you make a load case, um, you select a vehicle and then out of six, you only want to consider three uh, at max, but for the minimum, you only want to consider two. If you, uh, if you choose two, uh, well, three is not a good number, but let's do four. If you select two and four, program will um, calculate the, um, the case scenarios and then select uh, for the minimum, for the minimum number of loaded lanes, um, it, will, it will calculate uh, two, it will only select two lanes from a, a assigned six lanes for the minimum case. And um, it will um, calculate um, the which which four lanes that they will generate the worst case scenario, and then uh, it will it will only show it will only have uh, lanes on four four of six lanes. Um, there was a little um, not organized explanation, but I will have that more uh, explained in the in the response email. So this is how it was um, defined uh, for combined. Everything is everything is same except everything is same except loading effect. So I go to result. Um, go to uh, beam forces and moments. Uh, turn the legend and. Uh, I choose whichever load case or combination that I want to take a look at. Um, here you can see uh, min max uh, envelope. Uh, let's go to max. Or uh, let's use just moving load tracer. Um, I will simply select uh, just 593 and apply. So a uh, program compares between uh, two load cases and select uh, for independent um, select whichever load case that generates the worst case scenario for selected element. So it's neglecting the pedestrian load. Uh, it's only showing the uh, applied the truck load. But when I check um, the result for same element with combined load case, it considers um, it considers the pedestrian load and and the truck load at the same time. Um, uh, for this specific model, um, I'll I'll look into um, the negative moment uh, support uh, negative uh, lane support negative moment check. Um, lane support negative moment check uh, can be defined in load, moving load, and lane support negative moment here. Um, I've assigned the gutter group called, uh, oh, let me, let me open up some other file that can show a uh, better explanation. Okay, um, so back to lane support, lane support negative moment. Um, 
I've defined the structure lane support group uh, and added on the on the negative moment uh, check and go to lane support reaction and selected these two elements uh, these two nodes which is located at the support and I go uh, check the moving load tracer Um, as you can see here, um, I've selected the, uh, I've defined the lane support reaction node on, on the support and program calculates um, um, the, the loaded situation. Uh, I believe it's um, uh, 30, uh, some, somewhat distance from the supports with two trucks to, um, to, uh, to, to, same truck load applied on the both ends. Um, program automatically calculates the distance and um, it, uh, let me turn off the numbers. Um, this, this value is um, in uh, the influence line. Um, I believe uh, influence line can be, uh, you guys can um, copy that into your spreadsheet and then uh, retrieve the results. Okay. Uh, I'll pick one or two uh, questions from questions asked and then answer that. Um, I think we are the um, uh, we are uh, good on timing. Um, somebody asked, um, is the, is a truck load, um, distributed to adjacent girder? Um, so when vehicle load is applied on the deck elements, um, deck elements are sup supposedly connecting, um, the distance between, um, between each girders, um, the load, dis load, uh, will distribute to the girders and, to the support, so um, it all depends on how you select. As I as I explained in the slides, um, if you if you select uh, lane lane elements or cross beams, um, in order to have that effect, you need to um, select cross beams and then um, make sure you include that specific cross beam um, group in here. Um, yeah, I looked through the um, question list, but there were uh, too many. Uh, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to choose one. Um, so, uh, well, this is so far um, everything that I prepared for this uh, presentation. I, um, it's Yes. Um, so next, uh, next presentation will be um, will be done by my colleague Sungwoo Park, uh, who um, 
who is the original uh, organizer for this event. Um, uh, if you have any questions regarding this presentation or uh, anything re regarding um, any technical support uh, while using uh, Midas Civil, please submit. Um, uh, please, please submit um, email to ts at midasuser.com. Um, I believe uh, most of you are uh, active users already now. Yes, uh, please uh, please uh, send me uh, any email to uh, tsmidisuser.com. Uh, I'll um, well, I'm the person who's in.